I feel like whenever this music plays, I just want Neil deGrasse Tyson to start talking about space. Alright, well hello again everybody, and welcome back to uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition with our crazy-eyed female shepherd. Um, I'm just getting myself set up here, just trying to get the last bits of what I need going, and sending off some invites, because I know some people want them. Alright. Invite sent out. Um, so, uh, last time, if you didn't catch up with me after uh, after I ended, I did talk to the rest of the people in the lower part of the ship. Uh, got some conversations going with them. Got some more info. Um, I did want to talk to Doctor Chakwas before I head on to my mission. I think she's in here. No, she's on. She's in the lower. She's down here, but in the same area. Actually, no. She's down here and on this side. There she is. Yes, Commander. Yes. Is there something you need? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Okay, so, my mistake. We did actually talk to her last time. Um, but good to know that we did. I'm gonna head back up to the control thing, and uh, we are going to make our way to the Artemis Tau Cluster in search of Dr. Liara Tassoni. Coolest thing about this game as well, like another really kind of neat little fact, um, not only do you get information about where you are uh, from characters, if you look at the little card to the right there, you'll get information that gives you like its size, its population, its weight, all that kind of stuff. You get that for planets too, so I'll try to read them because they're actually really fascinating. So. Supposedly constructed by the long extinct Protheans, this colossal deep space station serves as the capital of its Citadel Council. Gravity is simulated through rotation and is comfortable 1.02 standard G's on the wards and a light 0.3 standard G's on the Presidium ring. Total length 44.7 kilometers. Diameter open 12.8 kilometers. Population 12 or 13.2 million, not including the keepers. And the gross weight is 7.11 billion metric tons. Now as we zoom out, there's the Citadel. That's where we're at right now. If I kind of scrub around... This is the local cluster. I believe this cluster is called Widow. So if we zoom out to the Serpent Nebula, now we get a bigger spectrum. And then once more to the Milky Way Galaxy. And yes, this game does take place in the Milky Way, so, um, I don't know if, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, so, okay, so we are looking for, um, Liara's dig site, which is at Artemis Tau. Hmm, interesting. There's a Asteroid X57 Exodus Cluster. I'm kind of curious as to why that's lit up. There must be a reason. There's another one over here, Hawking Eda. So yeah, we know that there's a rogue group of people over in the Hawking Eda cluster. Kepler Verge probably has something going on in it. Argos Row, Hades Gamma, Voyager. Um. Yeah, so we'll come back to we'll come back to the asteroid. I do want to go and get Liara to start us off. I can never remember. 
remember where we are going. So we got Athens, Knossos, Sparta, and Macedon. Now I can zoom in on any of these clusters. So first you gotta travel to the system. Now, I'm not sure if I have any more information on, um, on what cluster Liara is in. Sorry, I'm just going to go back to my journal here. Somewhere in the Artemis Tau cluster. Okay, somewhere in the Artemis Tau cluster, so we don't have any more than that. So we are in Artemis Tau, I believe. Yep, we are. Okay, so we're in Mass. This is the Macedon sector. Uh, Sh Shargila. Morning level 1 pressure hazard. Shargila has a very dense atmosphere of ammonia and oxygen. Its temperature surface is mainly composed of alumina and with deposits of sulfur. Comms buoys in the system have recently logged a number of unregistered vessels operating nearby. Chargila has an extensive silicon-based oxygen-breathing ecology. Heavily populated areas are covered with fine silica um, dust and the respiratory byproduct of the world's higher animal forms. High-speed surface winds, often laden with abrasive silica dust, present a hazard in areas uh, where the wind deposits a great deal of silica. Footing can be treacherous. EVAs are discouraged. We got the orbital period is 1.0 Earth years, radius of 5,693 kilometers, day length 40.6 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure, surface temperature, and gravity. You can all read. Um, I'm going to land. I'm going to go and see what's going on with Shargila. Mars rover, eat your heart out. Alright, so this is kind of how you explore planets in Mass Effect 1, is by dropping this little rover down. Um, I believe it also has, yeah, you can kind of bounce it around by boosting. I don't know if it gives me an actual map. Oh, it does give me a map. Okay, so there's Mako. There's an anomaly. There's a stronghold. And there's debris. So, let's head over to the anomaly. Yeah, we did fly a drone on Mars. Matriarch's writings recovered. 
It's not clear who lived here, but it appears to have been abandoned for some time. The container and the tent held, among other things, one of the matriarch Dilinga's writings. I gotta be careful staying out too long, or I will start to encounter hazards. That was silly. There's something over here. There's little orange dots on the map I'm trying to get to. Large deposit of thorium. Nice. So when you survey deposits like that, it means that um, they get added to your uh, inventory because you use them later on for different things. Uh, let's have a look at the map again. Surveyed thorium deposit. Let's go to the stronghold. Boosters are quite handy when the Mako gets a little unruly, or if you're gonna like flip it. Especially like right there, like too much air, you wanna just give it a little bit of control. Oh, we got We got at hostiles over the ridge. Got a lot of hostiles over this ridge, oh my goodness. Wow, this is a very rocky piece of terrain. This is a pirate enclave. We'll just let the Mako eradicate these people. And then that way I don't have to physically get out of my vehicle. And put myself in harm. Harm's way. I'm being sniped. Got him. Still a couple people alive back here. Oh, he's dead. Alright, stronghold is clear. We should be good to enter. Redeploying. A lot of hostiles in here. Alright, let's have a look at who is using what. Tally, you're going to stick with pistols, not a shotgun. I don't know why you even had that equipped. Garrus, you're a sniper. And I'm using the Avenger, good. Nope, somehow I've ended up with a sniper rifle again. Yeah. 
A lot of people in this place, holy moly. Actually, Garrus, go here, Tolly, go there. Not in the wall, right there. Go, go, go! Oh, they're on the other side of this. Cluster of them right there. Dead sniper. Garrus, could you please kill that person? Fine, I'll do it. Just regroup on me. Can't really do anything with the fusion containment cell other than blow it up. So it's really just like the red barrels in every game. Malfunctioning object. Armor upgrade, shield regenerator, grenade upgrade, high explosive. Decryption skill too low. Can I not have one of you do it? Maybe Tali? On me!
You discover evidence that the Asari leading the slavers as, and Nasana Dentius, an important ambassador on the Citadel, are sisters. You should return to the Presidium and confront Nasana with this. Cool. So that was absolutely worth coming here. I'm kind of annoyed that I can't get into that. I should check my skills. Maybe I can, can decrypt it. Squad. I don't even have the ability to, do, to decrypt. That's not my wheelhouse. Garrus can. But he has no points. And Tali almost can. Oh well. I guess we're not going to get into this. Um, I did want to check something as well. Oh, recovered items. Nice. Um, see here. That's better damage, worse everything else. I know the guy switched it. Grenades. Ah, oh, here it is. Grenade upgrade. This is what I was looking for. You can upgrade certain types of things. Um, incendiary upgrade. I'm going to go for that one. Uh, we got armor upgrades as well. Oh, well, actually that worked out because the armor I have now is actually better. Or wait, hang on. Nope. So that's the onyx. The gladiator's actually better if I go for gladiator. And I believe you can just like slap upgrades into things like um damage plus seven damage protection, health regen, shield recovery. Go. Uh, sniper or assault rifle upgrades. Oh, here we are. Weapon upgrades. Armor piercing rounds. Um, synthetic targets. We're not fighting synthetics. Phasic rounds. We're not really fighting shielded things. Anti-personnel rounds. There we go. And one last thing I want to do. So I want to see if I can give my teammates the ability to use their powers whenever they want. There. So my AI, my, my teammates will use whatever abilities um, they deem necessary. Sorry that was kind of long. I'll have to switch my ammo types out when the uh, levels begin based on what I'm fighting, um, but that'll just become part of uh, the gameplay, kind of like in Borderlands when you have to de-junk. Like I said, Mass Effect 1 is a little bit slower paced than Mass Effect 2. They change a lot in the second game that you'll see. Um, but you really do have to play 1 to understand like everything that's happening, and that's why I'm doing this. Ooh! Turian armor. 
Nice. Um, let's do a manual override. Y, X, Y, A. That was easy. Krogan armor and an Omni tool. Oh, that's cool. I like Tali doing like the sort of sweep there. All right, squad again. Wrong uh, equipment. All right, Garrus, let's have a look at what armor we can do for you. Oh, I can't change Garrus's armor. That's interesting. Despite him being Turian. Maybe I can? Maybe he doesn't have enough ability? I don't know. <laughs> um, can I at least change your sniper rifle, maybe? Oh, what you have is better. You don't use an Omni tool, but Tali does. Oh, that's that's possible. Yeah, he can't use medium armor. I forgot that it was medium. He's probably uh, using light armor until he levels up enough. That's a fuel tank. I can't do much with that other than blow it up, which I'm not going to do standing that close to it. We do have an upgrade kit. Ammo upgrade. Perfect. You end up swimming in upgrades by the end of this game, which is kind of crazy, but I gotta make sure that I start selling lower upgrades for higher upgrades, but we'll get there. Alright, back to the car. I'm pretty sure that now if I go on the map, the bunker will say explored. Yeah, I've already explored it. I don't know why it shows a little exclamation mark. We got the information we needed from it. Or did we not get everything in there? I don't know. I'm going to go another look around. One, I want to make sure that I fully cleared it because I'm probably not coming back here again. Aside from those few cabinets I couldn't open. Oh wow, that's super fast long times there. Not used to that. I'm used to being able to go get a cup of tea and come back and it's still loading. <laughs> we must have got everything. We went in there, we went down there, and we went up there. Yeah, that's everything. <laughs> Whoops. Apparently I just healed everybody. Okay. What is that? And why can I not get to it? Get down! That's a grenade. Neat. Well, we know the grenade works. Alright, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna move on. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Alright. Still trying to get a handle for this game. It's been so long, and it's just so weird coming back to the game. Also, I looked it up. This game is from 2007, so... It... I'd say that's not too shabby for a game that was 13 years old being revamped. Woo! That was fun. Can the Great Shepherd not jump and climb? Um, no, they didn't add that in until later on in the series. This is apparently rubble. Heading out. Heading out. 
Electronic skill too low. How do I get out of here? Oh, okay. Let's push X. I think it just uses them if you have the skill high enough. I don't know, if you're curious, look it up. I really don't know. Let's go to Porlon. Porlon's an entire, an enormous terrestrial planet, half, half again the size of Earth. Despite its thick atmosphere, the weak output of the red dwarf Macedon leaves its surface biting cold. The crust is mainly composed of silica, but does significant deposits of iron and other industrial metals are present. These Iodes may prove rich enough to profitably mine despite the heavy gravity. Let's survey it. Matrix writings recovered. You were scanning the planet's Polaron when a strange signal came from orbit. Navigator Presley determined the signal was from an ancient beacon. Your salvage team brought the beacon aboard and found one of the Matrix Dalinga's writings in, sto in the storage compartment. Padovig. Padovig is second of the Macedon system's giant terrestrial planets, and by far the more interesting. Most of the sea of liquid ammonia, in which a unique aquatic ammonia based biosphere has developed. While the frozen continents are largely bereft of life, a rich bounty of complex origin and organisms, many larger than human, flourish in the chilly toxic seas. While dreadfully inhospitable to humans, Padovig is sustainable for colonies by the Volus. Negotiations between the System Alliance and the Volus patrons of the, uh, the Turian hierarchy have made good progress. Faragalus is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with an abundance of airborne hydrocarbons. That's, that's it, let's survey it. Gas deposit surveyed. Scans from orbit reveal a large concentration of xenon. Alright, so that was Macedon. Let's go explore Athens. Salamis! Pharos. Distant Pharos has seen only a cursory examination by an unnamed probe. It has trace atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. Its surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of carbon. Deeper craters have been partially filled by ice, suggesting there may have been a significant amount of water locked up beneath its frozen surface. A large ice break crater in the southern hemisphere makes the planet visible from the inner system, leading to the planet's name. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of the planet Pharos revealed an abandoned base on its moon. The recon team found nothing of interest, but much of the debris was marked with the Magna Colony signals insignia. Let's survey... Nausicaa. Traces of sodium in the atmosphere give Nausicaa its overall dark grey colour, but it's otherwise a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. An abundance of water vapour in the atmosphere account for its white clouds. Salamis! The geological properties of Salamis have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it. Due to its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and proximity to the energetic star Athens, the equatorial daytime temperature have been known to turn the surface molten. The crust is composed of iron with deposits of platinum group metals. Circe. Circe is a modestly, modestly sized hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sulfur and chrome. Chlor sorry, sulfur and chlorine. 
These give it its striking yellow-green tint. As the development of the Proteus colony continues, Cersei will likely be developed for Helium-3 mining. Gas positive to surveyed. While scanning this gas giant, you detected a large concentration of Helium-3. As if I wasn't expecting to. Proteus! Like the Hanar homeworld, Proteus has more than 90% oceanic cover. The incredible heat thrown off from Athens raises global humidity to 100%, creates constant cloud cover, and powers colossal typhoons that rage across the surface year-round. Hot, humid, and storm-racked, Proteus's rare combination of oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere, and carbon-based biosphere nevertheless recommend it for colonization. A pilot program is studying the possibility of colonies below the ocean surface, safe from the worst effects of the weather. Gas deposit surveyed. Large amount of free oxygen. Pretty sure I've now surveyed all of the Athens cluster. Let's try Gnosis. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. Do you want me to look it up and see if I can make any sense of it? Arachnes. Small hydrogen helium gas giant. Arachnes has been developed as a full featured, if modest, stopover for ships hauling refined metals from th Therum, in addition to a powerful magnetic field to dump drive charge. Arachnes has a large automated infrastructure of helium 3 refining and deuterium mining on its many water ice moons. Sorry, that was a hard sentence to read. <sighs> Gas deposit! Nitrogen! Next band. Who is hiding on this band? Oh, right here. Armini. Armini is a terrestrial world with an unusually thin atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its surface is composed of silica with deposits of carbonaceous materials. The initial flyby probe of Armini detected multiple areas at the equator with oddly regular surface protrusions. Closer investigation revealed these are as million elaborate crypts, a fist left by a long extinct spacefaring species called the, the Zyolf. Many human universities wish to perform archaeological excavations. Council law holds grave sites as sacrosanct, however, and the matter has been tied up in court for a decade. Where are you? Oh, was that it? That was it. Zacros. Zacros is a terrestrial world nitrogen methane atmosphere containing trace amounts of hydrocarbons. Its frigid surface is mainly composed of water, ice, and hydrocarbon slush. Most of the surface is not solid enough to support the full weight of a landed ship. If approach is necessary, use shuttles or keep the ship's mass effect envelope up. Are you enjoying me reading these or do you want me to stop? Theorem. Theorem is a distant but rich industrial world claimed by the humane, or sorry, human, human system alliance. Its plentiful heavy metals have fueled the recent manufacturing boom on Earth. Core samples rich with fossils or simple silicon-based organisms indicate Theorem was more habitable in the past than it is in the present. Perhaps this explains the many Prothean ruins dotting the surface, most of which have been looted by the mining corporations. Guess we're going in for a landing. That looks like our site. It only took us three clusters to find. Alright. I'm not sure who I should take as my landing crew. I'm gonna st stick with my current loadout. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Team Alien. Whee! Commander, I'm picking up some 
strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Well, at least the environment's not hostile, so that's good. Can I go into any of these? Where's Garrus? Oh. Those Garrus wheels. Ah, oh, this is bringing back so many memories. The great thing is that the Mako automatically surveys nearby areas, so if I'm like passing by a deposit, it will just tag it for me. It's a nice fog. We got a hostile on the map already. Not sure if we're gonna be able to see it from here. But that is good. Oh yeah, I forgot they do that. Where's my long range cannon? Oh, there it is. I've somehow got this thing driving back forwards. More of those turret things down there. Dang it. Rockets. I also just realized I'm actually doing the main story mission, and I was trying to not do the main story mission, but it is what it is. Ha! That was fun. Oh, 
there's Geth. Dead. One nearby, I believe. It's a bunch of little blips on the map. I don't know what they're all representing. Crate back here. Striker Krogan body armor. I'm just gonna leave my Mako parked here. Seems like a safeish spot. We got gate controls. There's something in here with me. There is. A, X, B, B. Light armor, human liberator three. It was a pretty solid dodge, wasn't it? I think that weird turret thing is going to be on, this, on the other side of this gate. We should see if that armor is um, actually better. Nope. Liberator 3 is actually worse. Gives me biotic protection though. I'd love if someone could make a role-playing game that when you pick up gear, you don't have to pick it up and then equip it to decide if it's going to work or not. That was unsettling. Um, Tali, can you mess that up? Can you... Can you... Um, where's Sabotage? Oops, wrong button again. I can try to reload. Okay. You guys are hopeless. That's taken care of. Ah! Weirdness! Stop! Okay. Um, let's go check out the other side of the bunker over here. I 
I did level up, that's true. Uh, squad. I want to deal with Tali first, because I want to bump up her encryption. Or decryption. And then auto? Nice. Dampening. What does dampening do? Unlock damping. Shield capacity by 90. Nice. Okay. Um, Shepard. Spectre training all the way. Restores dead member with 40% health. Awesome. And let's go with... Uh, let's go with... What's this one up here? Heavy armor. Okay, and Garrus. Yeah, I need to get Garrus up to here to give medium armor. So, um... Unlock Assault Train increases tech uh, damage reduction by 12% and hardening by 12. Alright, now he can carry... That armor should work on him now. Nice. I'll take it. Tali, can I give... Oh, Tali has weird armor. Light Quarian armor is what she has. rounds and phasic rounds. Garrus, I love your armor. Suits you. Alright, let's head to the other... Uh, let's head to this bunker over here. Or oh, actually, we gotta open that gate, so drive over there. Me a rocket. A, B, B, F. Shotgun, assault rifle, and weapon upgrade. Okay, gate is open. Let's go have a look in the building next to us. Oh, a locker. And wheels. X, Y, A, Y. Oh, now I get light Turian armor. Thanks, game. More geth in here? Nothing in here, actually. It's like a river of lava flowing down up there. That's kind of cool. All right, we're back on the road again. There's a geth somewhere up here. I can see him lit up on the map. There he is, way out there. Oh, it's one of those things. There's another one there too.
Those things have a ridiculous amount of range on them. The Magic School Bus song. There's a Magic School Bus song called River of Lava. Alrighty then. Okay, let's not drive into the river of lava. Something... I see them. Which means they also see me. One down. I see it, it's shimmying. Got it. Whee! I think there's a turret up here or something. Miss me. Miss me, miss me, miss me. Ow. Stupid directional everything. That takes care of all that. Okay, seriously, how'd you get a rocket off before I killed you, dude? I know I dinged. I'm gonna level up when I get to uh, when I exit my vehicle next time. Is that okay? I don't think there's anything over here. It doesn't really appear so. Controls are a little strange. It's like the Borderlands controls, but drunk. Like it aims in the direction of where you're pointing the camera, but it spins the wheels in the direction the vehicle's facing. So weirdness happens. I swear he fired a rocket at me.
So, uh, there's a really fun little factoid here. You're not supposed to be able to take the Mako through this point, but you can. You can just kind of jam it into that hole and keep hitting thrusters, and eventually it'll pop through and end up on the other side. So I can do it cheesy way or I can do it legit way. I'll let you guys decide if I want to go cheesy or legit. Alright. Whoa. Tally, you got like dumped out into the lava land. Okay, so let's just change our equipment for a second here. Um, we're going to take damage versus synthetics. Okay, so yeah, 20% damage against synthetics is my best. There it is. Garrus, where can I put you? Where, where even are you? Oh, you're right behind me. Oh, Garrus teleported. Area Hello, Garrus. Area secure, says the guy who did nothing. Sniper! Can you snipe him? Maybe you could get a lock if you actually have the right weapon, Garrus. Go there. And kill that. Probably just do it while he's working on it. And stay down. <laughs> and he says, "And stay down." Thanks, Garrus. What are you Come shooting on. at, you gonad? Stop! By word, I think he actually maybe killed something. So the AI is pretty horrendous in um, the first game. They get much better in the second. I hit a rocket.
What? Seriously, Garrus? You actually killed something. Well done. Well done, my friend. I thought that one was um, okay. Odd choice of things to say. Ow! Get wrecked, synthetic scrub. Oh, through the knee. All right, Tolly, you're up. Kill something. I mean, if I hadn't heard that sniper rifle shot go out and saw that Geth keel over, I would have sworn that I had killed it somehow. <laughs> I was a Geth, and then I took a laser to the knee. Fantastic. One of these days, we'll have to play Skyrim. that I hated these things. I forgot that this was a boss fight. Great. Tali, can you move? Stalkers are horrible, and Tali's dead. Run away! Let's try Unity. Tolly's back. Awesome. I need her. I need her to mess up that big walker thing. I hate these little squirrely things. So annoying. And Tolly's down again. Okay. 
Stalker's dead. I can't see it when it... There's a sniper up there too. Okay, sniper's gone. That's actually doing anything. I need to get rid of this guy. Okay. How many of your friends are still out there? Sabotage is reloading. Great. And I can use overkill. Or I can die. Yeah, the uh, boss fights in this game are punishing. Put it lightly. Holly's staying out of line of sight. And Garrus hasn't died yet. He's doing a good job trying, though. Stalker's dead. Well, there is one left. Oh, crap. So, shields down.
Yes. Walker's down. I mean, the walker's kind of still walking, even though it is down, but... Back there. Someone or something. Sorry, Tali. That was actually a lot of fun. I forgot that those fights are tough, but they're actually really fun. Okay, so there's my entry point right there. There's still a Geth alive. Back here somewhere. I'm not going to take a chance that he's got a rocket launcher, though. Alright, so, that was cool. That was, that's over with now. Don't think there's anything I can loot around here. If there is, I've missed it. Alright, so let's head on into the uh, dig site. And, um, heh, level up. Which we should have done before that fight, but whatever. Unlock sniper rifles. Okay. Don't I already have sniper rifles, though? Garrus, what do you want? What does a game want you to have? Damping. Temporarily disables enemy biotics and tech within a certain radius. Oh, it puts it all into, uh, into decryption. How do I get him to have sniper rifles? Oh, that's why he wouldn't use it. There you go, Garrus. You're a sniper. Tali, I need your electronics and decryption skills up. Unlocks hacking. Ooh. Holy heck, you guys just unloaded everything you had on them. I can't even see you.
Nice. Good kill. Keep forgetting I have grenades. Should've used grenades against that giant walkie thing. Weirdly enough, I exactly remember this map. Elevator's messed up, so I guess we're going down. Uh, hello? Could somebody help me? Please? Can you hear me out there? I'm trapped! I need help! The to Sony, I presume? Thank the goddess. I did not think anyone would come looking for me. Listen, this thing I'm in is a Prothean security device. I cannot move, so I need you to get me out of it, alright? Your mother is working with Saren. Whose side are you on? What? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Benezia's daughter, but I am nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. How did you end up in there? I was exploring the ruins when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here. Can you believe that? Geth beyond the veil! I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtains would keep them out. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please! We'll find some way to help you. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. They have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. Alrighty. You guys love your rockets, don't you? Someone's grenade is over there.
Alright, well done team. Ooh, storage locker. Still there, Poison? Alright, so um, this area is now clear, so we can continue on with trying to free uh, Dr. Liara Tassoni. Which I think the way I'm going to do it is with laser drill. A. A, X, A, X, B, Y, A, A, X, B, A, A, X, B, Y, X. Look, I made a door. what this is. Oh, it's an elevator. How? Oh, how did you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. We blasted through with the mining laser. Of course. Yes, that makes sense. Please. Get me out of here before Morgath arrive. That button over there should shut down this containment field. Uh. Any idea how we get out of this place? There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on! I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia is involved? Seren's looking for the conduit. You're a Prothean expert. He probably wants you to help him find it. The conduit? But I don't know... What the hell was that? These ruins are not stable. That mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. We have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Joker, get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister! Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA, eight minutes. He needs to move faster. Once again, everything's falling apart around us. In case you didn't notice, this place is falling apart. Exhilarating, isn't it? Thanks for getting rid of those energy fields for us. Hand the doctor over. Whatever it is you want, you are not getting it from me. She'll stay with us, thanks. Not an option. Saren wants her, and he always gets what he wants. Kill them. Spare the Asari if you can. Not, doesn't matter. guy gone.
Got him down. Trying to regenerate. Too close, Commander. Ten more seconds we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died out there and your pilot is making jokes? Joker pulled our asses out of there. I think he's earned the right to a few bad jokes. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there. And not just from the volcano. Those Geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. Don't you want to like play a game or watch a movie where the hero is about to explo uh, uh, escape somewhere and they just die? <laughs> and it just keeps going as if like, oops. <laughs> just how old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours. But among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. Where'd you come up with this theory? I thought there wasn't any evidence. I have been working on this for 50 years. I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence. Eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge. Patterns that hint at the truth. It is difficult to explain to someone else. I cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case. It is more a feeling derived from a half-century of dedicated research. But I know I'm right, and eventually I will be able to prove it. There were other civilizations before the Protheans. This cycle has repeated itself many times over. If the Protheans weren't the first, then who was? I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them. I cannot prove my theory, but I know I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. 
Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays in the Citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines, the Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. This isn't helping us find Saren, or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit, or Saren. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate? Or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? We can talk again after you've seen the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the north... I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Liara is on our side. The Geth were trying to kill her. Benezia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe we don't know her. We never expected she could become a traitor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin. Was that really necessary, Shepard? We almost died in there. The Geth were everywhere. Of course, Commander. The mission must always take priority. Good luck, Commander. Remember, we are all counting on you. All right. So we got Liara on our side now. So I believe Liara is in Dr. Chakwas's chamber. So let's go see if we can find her and talk to her. Again, going the wrong way. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye. Liara. There she is. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. 
I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes, I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes, I just need to get away from other people. You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. All children rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. <laughs> you share the wisdom of the Matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Benezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate... Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess! How could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. 
I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. If something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Venezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. All right. It's good to talk to Liara. She is a very interesting character. Um, interestingly, she's the only character in the first game that male and female characters can romance uh, because of her um, her species sort of evolutionary alignment. Um, I may romance her. I, I did with my male character. The options for romance in this game are a little limited. Um, because I can only romance, um, Caden and Liara as female Shepherd, And personally, I think Caden is just a colossal tool, and I wouldn't give him the time of day. I don't know what I have against Caden, but I just don't like him. They really need a quick button that takes you right to the last codex entry. Faster than light drop, the, the Mako infantry fighting vehicle was designed for the System Alliance's frigates. Though the interior is cramped, an M35 is small enough to be carried in the cargo bay and easily deployed on virtually any world. With its turreted 155mm mass accelerator and coaxially mounted machine gun, the Mako can provide a fire team with weapon support as well as mobility. Since Alliance Marines may be required to fight on any world, the Mako is environmentally sealed and equipped with microthrusters for use on low-gravity planetoids. The Mako is powered by a sealed hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell and includes a small Element Zero core. While not large enough to nullify the vehicle's mass, the core can reduce it enough to be safely airdropped. When used in conjunction with thrusters, it also allows the Mako to extricate itself from difficult terrain. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I don't want to get too far into the 
into uh, the next part of the game yet, because like I only have like seven minutes, and then uh, I want to um, I want to wrap up. Commander, do you have a minute? I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. We'll get things done. I'd rather operate independently than have the brass on our backs anyway. I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. It's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid, where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves. Or, you know, for justice. Well, maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informed. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Seems like you beat the odds. How many didn't make it? Out of a hundred, maybe sixty have no effect. Thirty suffer adverse effects. Little things like brain cancer. The other ten show enough ability to augment with implants. Not always permanent, though. Not like the cancer. Next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. And how's a kid supposed to deal with that? A station at the edge of human space. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shot. The outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that would get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform. Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extra net to prevent leaks. No, I don't want to get physical with Caden. <laughs> Thank you. And you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bull every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. Like you. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the bits. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. We have to depend on each other in combat. I like knowing what kind of man I have at my back. I understand, ma'am. I won't let you down. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? Of course. But I don't enjoy it with everyone. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah. 
bad like that. Roughly translated, and in the voice of Torg, friendzoned. Sorry, I hate the term friend zoned. It implies something that is hard to explain, but I just thought it was funny because that's exactly what Torg yells when he gets shot down. Um heat load monitor. I can examine that. That's interesting. Why are there so many stations to monitor heat load? I wanna go examine that one cluster, with that one planet left in our cluster before um, I finish up. Then that way this cluster will be absolutely clear. It's so easy to miss stuff in this game if you're just going around too quickly. Phaistos. Phaistos is a small terrestrial with a trace amounts of carbon dioxide and xenon, the surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sulfur and various silicates. There is little of interest on this desolate world. I think that's it. We did Armini. We did Theorem and Zarkos, Arachnes. So how about we do this? How about we relocate our ship to Sparta and then next time we'll pick up in Sparta. I think this is a good plan. We'll uh, we'll pick up next time in Sparta, and uh, then afterwards we'll go and investigate the uh, asteroid that was in the um, the galaxy map. <laughs> so is that going to be the title of our our next stream? There, poison. This is Sparta. Oh, uh, that's funny. All right. Well, we are in the Artemis Tau. Sparta. We do have this this cluster asteroid to explore, and there are so many locations. There's a whole bunch over here that haven't shown up yet as well, and about four or five right here that haven't shown up either. Oh, and then if you want to get really crazy, oh, I can't do it yet. Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but. Oh, sorry. Hiccup there. Um, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a lot more to come. Uh, we're just getting, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg right here. So, alrighty. Been super fun, guys. I'm glad you're still enjoying it. I'm glad everyone keeps showing up for it. Um, it just makes me happy knowing that I'm playing something people are enjoying. But yeah, once we get to the second game, that's when things really kick off. Like I said, first game, kind of rough. Second game stellar. Anyways, um, I will see you guys next time. Um, probably not going to be until Thursday that we will be streaming again. So I'll probably be doing Thursday, and then... I don't want to stream this in the morning. I'm going to save my morning streams for other things, like Forza or whatever I'm just craving at the moment. I'm going to I'm going to save Mass Effect for maybe like Thursday and Sunday, Monday kind of time. If I did it on Sunday, I could call it Sunday Mass. There we go. <laughs> All right. Enough rambling. Uh, you guys stay healthy and stay safe and uh, I'll catch you next time. For now, have a wonderful night. Discount Magician signing off.